So here we have an interesting new product. This is our magic ring. And it is cool and interesting and magical because it has two writable or fully programmable chips inside. So you'll see this little subtle single dot here. That means that under that dot is the 125 kilohertz T5577 chip. There's another video that we did about uh, the T5577, how awesome it is. That link will be in the description below. Uh, you can basically clone any ID for a plethora of different low frequency card types, fobs and things into this side of the ring. And on the other side, you see these subtle two dots here. That means that underneath that is a 13.56 megahertz Magic MyFair 1K 4 byte UID chip that is rewri rewritable, reprogrammable. So Sector Zero is fully programmable. It is also a Gen 2 type Magic chip, which means it can be programmed using the MCT app on Android. So you can open this app and then be able to program uh, that side of the ring with uh, you know data that's directly entered or you can actually store files so let's say you have a bunch of different cards so you have like a play pass card uh, or whatever you have a bunch of these stored as files on the phone so dump files typically uh, either from proxmark or from the mct app itself and you can just select that file and then write it to the ring so in theory you can carry a bunch of different types of cards and things around with you as files on your phone and then program it into the ring so uh, let's just start. I'm going to show you how to do that with the MCT app, just a simple UID change. So let's say you want to copy the UID from a card or badge or fob into the magic ring. The first thing you need to figure out is, is it just the UID that needs to be copied or do any of the memory contents need to be copied? And are those memory sectors protected in any way with any security keys? So the, the probably the easiest way to do that is with tag info. It's just an app you open up and present and you get a scan. You can see MyFair Classic. Uh, you want to look at the full scan data. You can see the ID there. But you can also see the memory sectors and you can see uh, the factory default key, factory default key. You can see the memory contents of the sector zero. That's where the ID is and some other things. Uh, but then sector one is blank, factory default keys. Sector two, blank, factory default keys pretty much all the way down. So that's telling me that this particular card, which is actually a card that comes with the Samsung Ezon door lock, isn't using any of the security features or memory of the card. It's just using the UID as the authentication mechanism for the lock, which you know has its own security issues. But it means that we could, in theory, clone that into the, into the magic ring and then be able to use that with the lock. So let's go ahead and do that. So MCT, We'll open that up again. Again, we get the donate uh, thing, which I think you, you know, if you value this kind of stuff or this kind of app development, you definitely should donate. Um, so hit OK, and you can go to right tag or tools, either one, clone UID, it gets you there. Now you see status log, this is blank. So before we do that, we're going to hit read. And basically, it doesn't really matter. You can just leave the defaults. You set it on first you have to do that first you seize seize the um, the uid when you come back to tools and then clone uid you can see aha it's already pre-populated with the id it's ready to go so you just generate block zero and clone id then present the my fair side and you can see it's cloned to the ring so now that id is on the ring both of these card and ring share the same id so here I am at the front door. I'm just going to tap and wake the lock up and I have the MyFair side out and just present like that and it unlocks. Now let's take a look at the low frequency side. Okay, so here we have the Proxmark 3 Easy and the ring, magic ring here. And we're going to go ahead and take the single dot side. That's the low frequency T5577 chip, which is a pretty amazing chip. But uh, we're going to take that side. And we're going to place it down on the low frequency. Whoop. Oh, don't let it roll away on you. Uh, place it on the low frequency antenna. And then we're just going to do an LF search. And this is just going to look for any low frequency chips. And you can see there's already an EMID written to it. It's an EM mode, uh, as we like to say, which means <clears throat> it's going to be emulating an EM electromicronics uh, chipset. So you can emulate HID procs, you can emulate Andala, Awid, a bunch of different types of low frequency chips. But uh, for this you know, demonstration, we're going to write a different EM ID to it. And so how we do that, I think I can probably just set this down like this on, on there and just do another LF search. 
just to be sure we can still talk to the chip. Well, we can't talk to the chip. So let me just reposition, try again. And there it is. So I just had to put it slightly on the side or the edge of that LF antenna. So what I'm gonna do is issue LFEM410X clone. And uh, like all of Proxmark commands in the Iceman branch, uh, if we just hit enter, it'll give us a help screen so we know exactly what we're doing. I wanna do ID and let's just do something crazy simple. 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. So these are hexadecimal digits, which means two, two digits uh, for one hexadecimal byte value. 01 is the first byte, 02 is the second byte, 03, and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. Now we're just gonna go, uh, it says try LFEM410X reader to verify. Uh, sure, you could do that, but I'm just gonna go up, up, up to the search and do the search again. And we can see, ah, okay, that yeah, ID has been changed. So it's been successfully written. And it is important to verify because anytime you're writing to an electronic medium, the write process doesn't include any kind of verification. It just assumes that it worked, but it might not have worked. So, you know, just as an example, I'll take the ring off and do this. And you can see it says written to the tag, everything, but there's nothing there. So always verify. But that's how you do a simple clone of an EMID to the magic ring. So here's the garage door opener. It's been wired into our XEM access controller. I'm using the ring with the RFID side out and you can see it's got pretty good range. You can scan again to stop the door and scan to close. So that was a quick overview of the Magic Ring. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, enjoy the product. We had a lot of fun making it and I hope you get a lot of uses and a lot of uh, interesting use cases out of it.